Hello everyone, I'm your Manoj Patiki. Today I have brought another important video and it is the continuity of the last topic that is the history of plant pathology. In the last class we had dealt with the general history and the history of the fungi. In this class we shall continue with the history of the bacteria. What happened, how it all developed and all. Before starting the topic, it's a small request from me to you is Please subscribe to my channel, please share the video, please spread this video and this channel to maximum agriculture students who can make best use of it. Because there are many people who wanted uh, such videos. So please help them out, share this video with and spread to the maximum universities uh, it can possible because even the interaction with you, the comments you give, the feedbacks you give, it makes me more and more active and it, it keeps me very energetic to make more videos. It helps me out. So please do share, please do subscribe to my channel and let's continue the topic. Let's not waste the time. Yes, the history of the bacteria. That is the bacteria history in the plant pathogenic point of view. The first scientist who worked on bacteria and he's the person responsible that bacteria he identified as a pathogen, as an infection causing microorganisms. That is the person Robert Koch. He worked in 1876. What he did is first time he reported that bacteria is the infection causing microorganism. He worked on anthrax in animals what he found is that is anthrax what he found is some rod shaped bacteria in the bloodstream of infected animal and he found that and he said that it is the bacteria which is responsible for the anthrax and its symptoms he studied also on tuberculosis and other diseases uh, he worked on many bacterial diseases in animals. Then he gave some postulates. We call them as Coates postulate. Yes, these are the postulates that are responsible for the identification of the microorganisms as a pathogen or a, which is an infection causing microorganisms. Yes, let's see what are the postulates given by Coates one by one. First postulate is continuous association. That is, if it is a host, if it is a microorganism, these should be continuously in contact so that in the resulting, they develop the host, develop a symptom. That is, what here given is continuous association of the organism, organism with the host to give some symptoms that is let's think this tick sound is a symptom it give a symptom that is a character of a microorganism when it is if this with its host then it should give a characteristic symptom that is that should be damaging to the host okay let's see next postulate it is isolation of the organisms in a pure culture that is isolating okay i was saying this is a microorganism you have to isolate this microorganisms and you have to keep it in a pure culture in an artificial medium so that it should grow there that is his second postulate he said that it should be kept in a pure culture in artificial medium and it should go then third postulate is the microorganisms that are grown on the artificial medium in pure culture after inoculating these microorganisms on a, another let me say this is another healthy susceptible plant if it is inoculated with this plant then it should show symptoms as soon as possible it should report earlier i mean it should be uh, symptoms should be shown in this plant also then it's a pathogen then these were the three postulates given by coach adding to his postulate there was another person who gave the fourth postulate that is with the name erwin f smith 
Erwin F. Smith gave the fourth postulate. What he said is, you have to extract, re-isolate the microorganisms from which to which it was second time infected. That is, to a healthy susceptible plant, you are infected second time. If you extract, if you isolate this microorganism from this and keep it in a uh, artificial media, then again it should grow, it should develop as same as the second uh, second fortunate what the you got the thallus and all microorganisms it should be same as that that is the fourth postulate given by Erwin F. Smith these are very important in identifying the microorganisms as a pathogen but there is a limitation I think you people know about the obligate parasite in which the host is compulsorily needed the host is required there so in such microorganisms or in such organisms there is no possibility of growing in an artificial media such as virus, viroids, uh, like fungi like powdery mildew, downy mildew and all. There are many organisms which can't be grown in an artificial media. So this is the limitation of Koch postulate. Next important scientist is T.J. Burrell. T.J. Burrell, he was from United States of America. His work was in 1882. Okay. What he did, what he did is, he was the first person to report that bacteria is a plant pathogen also. Till then, we know that bacteria is a pathogen in animals, but he first reported that bacteria is also a plant pathogen. He worked on fire blight of beer and the organism's name is Ervinia amylovora. Ervinia amylovora is the microorganism name in the fire blight of beer worked by T.J. Burrill who first discovered that the bacteria is the plant pathogen. The next important person is Erwin F. Smith. He, we have referred him in the fourth postulate of coach but now let's continue what all other works also done by him. he discovered that the some of the he worked on many diseases he discovered many diseases uh, by special bacterial diseases and he were he discovered that bacteria built up cocoa bits and solanaceous crops He discovered bacterial built of solanaceous crops and cocoa bits and he was the first person to report crown gall. He was the first person to report crown gall. It is very important in biotechnological aspect also because it is the bacteria that is responsible for uh, the many biotechnological tools that is agrobacterium tubifacients. And for the first time, crown gall was reported by Erwin F. Smith and due to his systematic study of the bacteriology in the plants, he was named, he was rewarded as father of phyto or phytobacteriology. Because he was so systematic in learning those things and analyzing the things, his books and all, uh, he was rewarded with them and he discovered the agrobacterium to efficient crown gall. Now let's speak about another important person in the history of plant pathology or history of microbiology and all. He is very important because he is the person who discovered or who invented the Gram reactions. That is Christian Gram. His work was in 1884. What he did is he proposed a Gram reaction based on the cell wall bacterial wall of the bacteria in his staining he took a bacteria he first stained them stained them with a crystal violet color crystal violet color in this if that bacteria retains this crystal violet color till the end of the process then such bacteria are called as gram positive example for such bacteria Bacillus clavibacter. Bacillus clavibacter is an example 
okay in this uh, this is a gram positive reaction then in the gram neg uh, negative reaction what happens is the, it retains the secondary stain the primary stain will go off that is it retains the secondary stain which is safranin a pink colored stain safranin it is retained with the organism the primary stain here will go off and secondary stain will retain such bacteria are called as gram negative bacteria and example for such bacteria are xanthomonas erbinia and some other examples it is very important uh, because it is a very deciding factor because most of the pathogens are, are negative that is gram negative bacteria we decide many characteristics of the bacteria with this this is the one of the historical and the legendary step took, uh, took by uh, christian gram by inventing this um, staining that is the gram staining it's very important yoshi yoshi is a scientist in 1953 what he did is he said that bacteriophages so virus bacteriophages can be used to treat the bacterial leaf blight in paddy what in the colony of the bacteria in a culture medium if it is infected with a bacteriophage then it shows a transparent colonies a transparent colonies zones so uh, he concluded that bacteriophages can be used to control the bacterial leaf blight of paddy a transparent zone in the bacterial colony <laughs> and next work was done by Waxman essay Waxman essay in 1951 he discovered and he got the Nobel Prize for the discovery that is discovery of the antibiotic known as streptomycin and that's his work next Dai et al these are the, uh, the Dai and his co-workers in 1980 they added one of the important component of the taxonomy of the plant pathogenic bacteria that is pathover january 1st 1980 is a historical step which was taken and approved the pathover introduction into the taxonomy and this was contributed by Dai et al we have completed now bacterial history now we, we shall see some organisms like bacteria that is phytoplasma in the phytoplasma Dai et al are important because those are the persons who identified this phytoplasma that is mycoplasma mycoplasma is normally in animals in plants we prescribably say phytoplasma these organisms will be mainly present in phloem we shall study the structure uh, i mean the analysis of the uh, phytoplasma spiroplasma and all in later class of efficiency doi et al what they did is in 1967 in japan they observed that in a plant suffering from LOS, allowing uh, like uh, symptom, they observed that in such plants, in the phloem of those plants, they observed microplasma like organisms. They named the such organisms as phytoplasma, and it was phytoplasma which infected the phloem part of the plant that were discovered by Doi et al. Don't confuse with the Dai and Doi et al. Dai et al. gave the pathover. Doi et al gave the phytoplasma next another important is Ishii et al Ishii et al in 1967 they reported that these MLOs on the plant that is phytoplasmas disappeared from plant when they were treated with a tetracycline if those plants the infected plants are treated with a tetracycline they disappeared but temporarily not permanently but temporarily they got disappeared and he reported that tetracycline was one of the important tool now another types of bacteria that is spiroplasma in this the important scientist name is Davis et al in the year 1972 what they did they observed some of the motile helical motile helical wallless microorganisms associated with the constant they studied the constant and their 
these type of organisms were associated with them they named it as a spiroplasma and they cultured them they characterized them and many works were done on spiroplasma by this davis et al next another types of bacteria that is rickettsia like bacteria in this bacterium the important works were by winsor and black in the 1972 what they observed they observed some of the phloem uh, these plants or the what you say club leaf of clover in the club leaf of clover they observed some of the type of the bacteria that were inhabiting phloem and they identified it as a rickettsia like bacterium similarly in pss disease and all similar symptoms were given and similar organisms were identified okay friends we have completed the history of the bacteria phytoplasma spiroplasma and all now we shall continue with the history of virology plant virology the era of the plant virology begin with a person named as adolf edward meyer he is very important person because he began the study the scientific studies on virology he reported a disease which is very important in identification of the viruses that is tobacco mosaic disease it caused in the tobacco there were lot many questions regarding this because it was not a microorganism it was neither a nutritional imbalance that is said by him but they were not sure about the microorganism they could not able to see something or they don't know what's happening to the tobacco and all. at that time he reported that this is not due to microorganisms there is no microorganisms causing it and even there is no nutritional imbalance that is fluctuating to cause this disease so but he was not sure about the virus he did not give that is it's a virus such organisms survive in this and they cause the disease but he just there my it's not microorganism and it's not the nutritional imbalance then the, he started to study on it what is it what might happen how the contagious nature will spread then he demonstrated that the contagious nature the contagious nature of the organisms that is present by the artificial inoculation he inoculated artificially then he cultured them actually it can't be cultured he did not culture means he tried to explain the how it can be contagious to other plants by the sap and mechanical transmissions and all there are many procedures for that uh, he did that and he demonstrated that and he said that if you take a infected leaf boil the sap then the infectivity of the causal agent is destroyed the causal agent does not infect at that time so these are some of the basic experiments done on the plant to identify what happened to it there is no complete conclusion to every questions that arise around the tobacco but the scientific study began with this person next what happened is it's a continuous process in the discovery of the virus because every study every studies that were going on on virus were on tobacco mosaic virus itself so after the edward mayer said something about that disease and he made a studies on it then it was continued by another scientist his name is dimitri ivanovsky his work was in 1882 what he did is he confirmed the results or the findings of the mayer then he said that it is filterable through the bacterial filters there will be some bacterial filters you can imagine some sewage will be there where only certain thing can pass in bacterial filters bacteria can't pass but this agent was passing that means it is still smaller than bacteria we can say that's what dimitri ivanovsky said after that there comes a another scientist he is very important and he is the founder of virology that is what he did is uh, his name is especially his name is martinus wilhelm bejerent his work was in 1898 
what he did is he confirmed the findings of the mayor and even of sky first thing he will do that then he tried to extract the transmission that is sap of the wires then he tried to pass it through the porcelain filters through gel agar gel and uh, but it was passing the agent was passing he said that there's something else there's something else than everything you just can't imagine it is very smaller than every organisms we know till now and he called that as contagious contagium vivum fluidum that is contagious living fluid the sap extracted from the infected part of the tobacco thus he was the founder of virology his his studies were extensive extensive at that time that's why martinus willem bjerink name is very important to remember next entity w m stanley he was from united states of america what he did is he took a tmv that is tobacco mosaic disease infected leaves and he treated it with a ammonium sulfate he treated with a ammonium sulfate he in result he got a crystalline protein he got a crystalline proteins and those crystalline proteins were infectious that was the work done by wm stanley and he concluded that it is an autoclave the in causing agent the infectious agent or which it is it's a autoclave protein that can multiply that can enter into a host and multiply within the living cells any host or any living cell is there it can enter into it and there it multiplies that's why he said it's an autoclave protein next comes the scientist bader f e and theory n m they work over in 1936 what they did they did they showed that pmv tobacco mosaic virus is a nucleoprotein it's a nucleoprotein and contains phosphorus it's a nucleoprotein contains phosphorus they did there were some experiments and they showed this result next comes the another important scientist h o homes his work was in 1929 what he did he gave a method a method to quantify the virus in tissue in tissue how to quantify we can he said that and through local lesions that were produced and the amount of he said that the amount of plant sap preparative the amount of plant sap preparative is there it is directly proportional to the number of local lesions it can form this is the result given by him amount of plant sap preparative is directly pre- proportional to number of local lesions produced by it after completing the history of the virus we now we see the viroids they are still smaller than that already people were confused of tm whether is viruses they still got confused to this vir- viroids and prions viroids it was reported by a scientist daniel tivo in the year 1971 he reported this in potato spindle tuber disease potato spindle tuber disease he saw that a naked single stranded a naked naked means open there is no covering for the genetic material a naked and it's a single stranded then it's absolutely a rna single stranded circular molecule it and it is circular molecule of infectious rna the rna were the infectious he saw the single stranded circular molecule and it's naked he called them as viroids and you know friends the viroids can only be and it has not do you know friends the viroids has not been reported in animals or any other things they are only reported in plants only plants has such diseases smallest in plants i'm sorry here smallest in plants and it's the genetic material it has it's not enough to code for an amino acid such a small genetic material it has that is the viroids only in animals or oh sorry only in plants 
and such other examples for this viroids are uh, coconut kadang kadang virus and there are some more example reported till now only in plants there comes the another one that is the prions the scientist who worked on it is a prisoner his work was in 1972 he found that there are proteins there are some proteins molecules such as uh, approximately of uh, weight 55000 deltons approximately to this deltons weight there has the coding one and it is encoded in the chromosome encoded by chromosomal gene there are some chromosome maintaining gene such genes encode these proteins and they encoded in the brain cells the host produced in the host they produced in the brain cell and these are reported only in animals especially like a uh, mad cow disease is a best example for everything there are no reports in plants only in animals viroids only in plants prions only in animals now we have completed about the viruses and viroids and prions now we shall enter the topic of nematology that is the history of the nematology the important person who started such studies was john needham you listen his name in day by day classes and his important work was first time he discovered that or he reported that a nematode is in interaction or in contact with the plants the first report of nematodes in association with the plants the studies he made were on wheat seed gall nematode that is wheat seed gall problems in which the nematode is in association with the plant and the nematode that was in association was angina triticae this is the nematode that is responsible for the wheat seed gall problem and that was reported by john needham next report a continuous with this john needham's report there were several report that were reported such that a root knot nematode report was given by berkeley in 1855 and the species is melodogain species and kun kun in 1857 John Needham had studied in 1743 friends it's very long back after that 1855 more than a century berkeley reported root knot nematode and kun reported the bulb and stem nematode that is ditelancus dipasi dipsasi sorry and last was gachat reported a cyst nematode in the sugar beet that is heterodera scati these are the reports given by several scientists and there are some more works i have to see father of nematology is i'll say in the next slide okay friends let's continue the nematodes that is na cob na cob we have rewarded him with the name the father of plant nematology he coined the term nematology he coined the term nematology what he did is he studied many plant parasitic nematodes he extensively scientifically studied them and he classified them and made more studies and more extensive studies on them and he developed a technique to extract them for the extraction of nematodes he developed one of the important techniques uh, few techniques are there it's very important to extract such nematodes was developed by nacom due to his activity due to his works on nematology we rewarded him as the father of plant nematology next comes the scientist atkinson atkinson he reported we can see uh, some of the interaction or association of the fungi few fungi with the nematodes such association were reported by atkinson fungus and nematode association majorly in cotton wilt he reported on cotton wilt in which in the presence of nematodes in the pre- in the presence of nematodes the cotton wilt that is fusarium wilt caused was more severe in the presence of nematodes more severe such association was reported by atkinson similar association was report, reported by hunger in 1901 he reported in the bacterial wilt of cotton of oh, sorry of tomato bacterial wilt of tomato 
where it is facilitated by root knot nematode. In the bacterial wilt of tomato, the disease is facilitated by root knot nematode. We have seen here fungi and nematode association. It's a bacteria and nematode association. And heavy tetol. These are the scientists who reported that the nematodes, some nematodes transfer viruses. He worked in 1952. He gave the report in 1952. He said that some nematodes transmit the viruses. Okay, friends. After completing the nematology, now we shall see another group of organisms that is protozoans. The protozoan history, protozoan disease history. That is, first scientist we see here is Voronin. Voronin in 1878 he worked. What he did? He did it. He studied on club root of cabbage caused by the Plasmodiophora brassicae. Plasmodiophora brassicae. This Plasmodium which means a naked mass of the protoplasm you don't have a cell wall there no cell wall a naked mass of the protoplasm covered by a thin membrane it covered by a thin membrane known as hyaloplasm hyaloplasm is a thin membrane that covers the plasmodium there no cell wall and he reported that and he said that it is it produces this post like sporogenous and cytogenous spores and finally he kept these in the flagellate protozoal classification next important sentence is lafonte lafonte actually davis or david uh, did some works here he observed that but first reported by lafonte he said that a protozoa he saw some protozoans in a latex producing or trees like euphobia in such trees he found the protozoans in that and he reported that in the 1909 and the next scientist who worked on protozoans is Stahel. Stahel work was in 1931. What he found is he found some flagellate protozoans in the phloem of the coffee which, he, which was a non-latex plant till then they know only in the latex plants but it is a non-latex but they found the flagellate protozoans in the phloem of the coffee plants and what he did what they did is the protozoans in the phloem of the coffee plant they started to producing abnormal phloem tissues and sometimes the wilting of the plant also is done by them and as the it is a obligate parasite there are no there is no coach postulate proving in it coach postulate does not prove these organisms now we have seen about some organisms and their history now we shall see what are the contributions by some scientists to the chemical control or chemicals that were given by them. We have referred many, I just briefed them uh, which we have already studied that is the Prevost. Prevost gave the copper sulphate treatment for the wheat burnt. Then the Robertson in 1824, he gave that sulphur treatment would found effective in managing the powdery mildew of peach. Next to Millardet. We have listened to the beautiful story of the Milladet, how he discovered, I don't say it is discovered, how he rediscovered the proportions required for the uh, mixture, that is the Bordox mixture, where in honor, in honor of giving to his place, the place where he was residing during his uh, teaching period, that is Bordox University, and to honor the Bordox place, he has given the name Bordox mixture. Then in Matthews, Matthews, I think uh, we have not referred him. I will say in 1919, Matthews, what he did to control the root knot nematodes, he gave the chemical that is chloropicrin or tear gas. I'm sorry, it's not and it is or chloropicrin or tear gas was found effective in controlling the root knot nematode. Next. Pistel and Williams in 1934. What did they did? They developed few dithiocarbamate fungicide. They developed a fungicide with name of the other of the branch dithiocarbamate from dithiocarbamic acid. I will underline this dithiocarbamate fungicides from dithiocarbamic acids 
which were highly unstable when they were involved in the rubber vulcanization process when they involved in the rubber vulcanization process they were highly unstable the example of dithiocarbamate fungicides are mancozeb manab and others etc now you shall see next scientist that is carter carter in the year 1943 what he did he reported the nematicidal property of dichloropropene and dichloropropene that is dd we call we call them as dd dichloropropene and dichloropropene it is a nemat it has a nematicidal property that was reported by carter and next is von smelling and kulka in 1966 it was the first systemic fungicide introduced by them in the 1966 from the oxazin derivatives from the oxazin derivatives they introduced the first systemic fungicides and that were found effective against high up class of fungi that is he introduced plant wax plant wax that is oxycarboxin found effective against rust and vitavax carboxin were found effective against smut these are the importance okay friends now we shall end this class i know it's too lengthy class uh, but don't worry this is the just a history when you want to listen to the history you can just remember the years and all but when you want to listen to the story of the histories then you can surely watch this video because the concepts we are doing in further classes somewhat related to the history also so it's a these two classes or i will make another class for the history of the plant pathology in india but these classes are just an introduction to the entry of the beautiful concept of plant pathology so please just watch it once if you could remember something remember or whenever you want revise it whenever you want please revise this and thank you thank you for watching this video please like share comment and subscribe to my channel and encourage me to make more and more videos and if you have any request to make videos on any subjects please try feel free to contact me don't hesitate just tell how could i help you thank you